Hey guys, welcome back to the devotional series from Out of Ashes Ministries. This is Devo number 10. And uh, just wanted before we get into this to remind you, if you have not done so, um, check out our YouTube page. And uh, if you've missed any of the devotionals previously, you can see they're all in a playlist there and they, they are there for you to go back and check. You can watch them all in kind of one wham bam thing or you can kind of pick them out as you want to or go back, refresh yourself and just kind of see where we are. All the new devotionals will be added there as well. I also want to ask you to take just a second if you haven't already to like, subscribe and share these videos. It really helps our channel get more exposure and to reach more people um, that maybe need to hear this message. Also, don't forget to follow us over on Facebook. We have some exciting news coming up and I want you to be a part of it. So make sure to go over to Facebook and just click the like button and uh, you'll get all of the updates that are coming. So this week's Devo, we're going to continue talking about the remnant. Last week we talked a little bit about um, the remnant and about what being a part of the remnant means. God doesn't choose the remnant. The remnant chooses to be the remnant, right? And we talked about that, which is an exciting and a powerful concept. And I hope you kind of got to chew on that last week and it really started to work its way into your being. This week, I want to talk about one of the purposes of being the remnant. And to do that, we're going to look into Genesis chapter 45. Now, while I was studying, doing some word study on the, the word remnant, I was looking into the original Greek and Hebrew. I found one word that is often translated as remnant, but it has other meanings as well as most words do. And we find it here in Genesis chapter 45. We're going to start in verse 4. This is the story of Joseph, of course. It says, And Joseph said to his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, who you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. That's a beautiful verse. We're going to come back to that in just a second. Verse 6. For these two years hath famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall be neither eating nor harvest. Verse 7, And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Now that word posterity in verse 7 is our key word. The Hebrew word that is in the original text is she'idit. She'idit. And that word can be translated remnant, but also is translated posterity. Okay, So that kind of ties last week's devotion together with this week and kind of what we're talking about. So Joseph, what, what is he saying here? What does this have to do with the remnant, being the remnant? Well, this word shadeed is so powerful because if we look at Joseph's life, we see that, that Joseph's life is the story of being the remnant, right? The remnant. We're going to look at the purpose of what being the remnant is. The first thing I want to do really quickly is remind you that you have the power to choose to be the remnant. God is putting out a call in the earth. And it is up to us to choose whether or not we're going to do that, to go counter culture, to go counter, counter our world even, and to be who God calls us to be. Secondly, I want to warn you slash encourage you with something. If we look at Joseph's life, from the moment his brothers began to plot against him, Joseph's life was a series of humble, humblings and, and, and uh, you know, God, God humbled him and God raised him and humbled him and raised him and humbled him and raised him. He went through some extremely dark times, and yet he, was, he had, was blessed with some amazing, amazing positions of authority and influence. What happens when we make a step towards the Father? I know this has probably happened in your life at some point. Many of us, it happens as teenagers and happens later on in our, our adult lives when we kind of reaffirm our faith. But most times what happens when we say, God, I want more of you. Today is a new day. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm never going back. From this day forward, I'm going to be more about you and about your business. I want to be more like you. I want to worship you differently. What's the first thing that usually begins to happen? Doesn't life start to fall apart? Right? Doesn't things that you never thought you'd have to deal with all of a sudden become trouble and tragedy and crisis and drama and noise in your life? Well, that's exactly what happened in Joseph's life, wasn't it? Joseph had some dreams. God gave him a call, a vision, and, and, and Joseph responded to the call. He began to tell his brothers about the awesome things that he was hearing from God and what happened. Trouble began to strike. I want to encourage you right now. If you are experiencing those things, or if you know someone who is experiencing those things, I want to talk to you, and I want you to be able to talk to those other people. What happens when we say, God, I want more of you, I'm coming closer to you, is that God says, all right, come on. 
If you're going to give yourself over to God, then he is going to take it. He's going to take you at your word. But God is not going to leave you the same way that he found you, that he gets you. He's not going to return you to this world the same way that he received you from this world. So the trouble and the trial and the drama and the things that you are facing are not an attack from the enemy. They are not that you are in, in error and God is trying to correct you. That is not, those two things are not it. Don't let anyone or the enemy lie to you and tell you that's it. What it is is that God is taking you at your word and he is beginning to mold you and shape you into the person that he wants you to be. He is putting you on the potter's wheel. He is putting you in the fire and beginning to refine out the impurities. You are going through the refining process. And certainly we come to a fork in the road most of the time where some people say, I I wanted to commit more to God, but life began to fall apart and this is not worth it because God doesn't do this. This is not how God acts. God doesn't allow bad things to happen to good people. Does some of those things sound familiar? There's a fork in the road. Those people, people A, will turn away and they will be mediocre and they will live their lives just as normal average people that had a chance to do something amazing for God and never capitalized on it. Then there's the part B people that choose to be a part of the remnant. The call is the same and yet some people choose not to and some people choose to because we don't know how to filter the refining of the Lord. Does God send bad things on his people? Well, it depends on how you define bad, doesn't it? In Scripture, if we're honest about Scripture, over and over and over, God sends tests and trials to refine His people. So does God send bad things to His people? Yes, but the purpose is not to harm us. The purpose is to refine us, to make us more like Him, to change us. And if we will understand what's going on as defined by Scripture, instead of defining what's going on by the world's definition, then we will understand what's happening and we can come out of it with the the process and with the result that God intended. Instead of being discouraged and walking away and being an almost disciple, being an almost revolutionary, being an almost revivalist, we can come out being as God wanted us to. So what is the purpose of that refining and why does God do that? We see it in verse five and seven. Verse seven, and God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth. In, in verse uh, 5, he says, look, don't be, don't be mad at yourselves. Don't be grieved. You need to go to some people in your life and say, you know what? There's trouble in my life and I blamed you for it, but it wasn't you. It's God. God was working this out. God sent this into my life to refine me. You need to do that and clear your heart of that thing so the Spirit can move freely through your life. But God is doing this because He needs people that will be a sanctuary, that will be posterity in the earth. Because you have family members, you have co-workers, you have children, you have grandchildren, you have people that you worship with every week that famine is encroaching into their lives. They are going through dry and desolate times. They're going through darkness and they can't find their way out. And what do they need? They need someone who has it together. They need someone who is prepared, someone who has done the hard things, someone who has put their business in order so that their life is not chaos, so that they have the time and the energy, the joy, the peace, the anointing, and the wisdom to help those people in need around them. You see, Joseph was blessed because he went through the process and he understood what was going on. So in the end, while the process was not, was not overall glamorous, it's not going to be. He understood what it was. He took it for what it was. And in the end, he was humble enough to say, it wasn't you guys. It wasn't you. It was God that did this. He did this for you. God used me as a tool. So is it worth it being a part of the remnant? (laughs) Is there anything more incredible? Is there any calling that's better than being the the posterity, than being the, the person that God uses to preserve the people around you? Your family will be preserved by you. Your, your friends and the people you worship with, your coworkers, the people in your circle, in your world, are you gonna be there to preserve them? That's what being a part of the remnant is all about. So just in closing real quick, number one, be a part, choose to be a part. You have permission to seek God with all that you are. Number two, see the trials for what they are. They're not here to harm us, they're here to refine us and to help us. And number three, The purpose of the trials, the purpose of being a part of the remnant is because God wants to set you up as a sanctuary for the people around you. 
for when they are not ready and they can't handle life, they can come to you and you can say, you know what? I've prepared for you. I've pre God has prepared me for you to point you to him so that they can be preserved in their time of need. Guys, this is an incredible, incredible concept. And I hope that it begins to leak into your soul, into your bones, because it's empowering. It's empowering and it's amazing once the anointing begins to flow in this area and you understand what your purpose is. That's our purpose, to be a part of the remnant. So I wanna encourage you and I want you to encourage someone else. If you know someone that's going through this, encourage them, point them to this video or you take the authority as a believer and you encourage them yourself. Get in these scriptures and read these scriptures so it becomes a part of you and you can speak with authority from the word of God into someone else's life and you can begin to build them up as a part of the remnant. Our goal and our ministry, and we say it over and over, is to strengthen the kingdom one life at a time. If you are strengthened today, go and strengthen someone else. The kingdom will be better for it. God bless you. I hope you have just an absolutely incredible rest of the week. And don't forget to check back next week for another Devo. We'll be moving along in our studies. And chew on this this week. Share it with someone. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week.